Welcome to my channel. For those of you just tuning in, I've been building a model turbione. This is the current status of the project. I'm simply providing some torque to an arbor underneath the top panel. Listen to that beautiful ticking sound. In this video, I'm going to be discussing how I made the gears. Making clock gears is a tricky subject. Traditionally, clockmakers put some round stock on the lathe, and using a combination of a position indexer, milling attachment, and gear cutter, they cut the gears one at a time, like one tooth at a time. And I have the greatest respect for people who use this time-honored method. I really do. But I myself don't have the patience or the time to use such a method. Instead, I actually just use a CNC mill to create the gears for me. I see so many videos of people making gears on a lathe and whatnot, but not so many using mills. And there are several reasons I actually prefer to use a milling machine. First, the pinion and gear can be created at the same time as one piece of metal, so there's no need to press fit anything later or use thread lock or anything else. The pinion is forever attached to the gear, no matter what. And some clever people might say, well hold on, clock pinions are typically steel and the wheels are typically brass, so you have to have two cuts of metal. And yeah, I guess that would be true if you wanted to have all your pinions be steel and if you wanted to have all your wheels be brass. But what a lot of people don't realize is that I think a big part of the reason there are alternating metals, so brass, steel, brass, steel, is because the friction coefficient for steel against brass is a little bit less than brass against brass, and also less than it would be for steel against steel. So when you're making a clock, you want to reduce as much friction as you can, and so there's these alternating metals which allow you to have a lower friction coefficient. But you can accomplish the same thing if you have a brass wheel connected to a brass pinion, and then that pinion drives a steel wheel, which is connected to a steel pinion. You get the same effect. And really, since this is just a prototype and a fun little gadget for me, I'm making all the gears out of aluminum. Uh, in fact, the only visible gear in the project is the escape wheel. Everything else is under the top plate. Anyway, back to using the mill. It might be surprising to some, but if you have a nice, big, rigid CNC machine, you can make exquisitely small parts. For this project, I used an 8th inch mill, and then I used a 16th inch end mill, and then I used a 132nd inch end mill. And that is super tiny, like almost like a needle. But if you have a quality CNC machine, and I do, it should be able to precisely utilize that end mill. And the fees I use for that size is about 1.8 inches per minute at about 5,000 RPMs. And I take maybe 2 hundredths of an inch per pass. So I'm just taking little nibbles, and the CNC machine does take time to make. Uh, these three gears and the associated pinions took about three hours, but um, the results are, are beautiful. So I'll take a look at this gear in my hand. The teeth are tiny and perfect. They're every bit as good as I would expect from using a lathe and gear cutter. And best of all, I can produce many different sizes of gears and pinions without having to buy new end mills or specialty gear cutters. And to my knowledge, there's only one company that really is left making horological gear cutters, and they are really expensive, like 60 bucks a pop, and maybe even more for some. So I really prefer using just ordinary end mills. Uh, the, these small end mills I, I get are from Harvey Tools. Um, they make specialty micro end mills, and um, they're just great. Here's the fixed internal spur gear I made. Imagine having to cut this out on a lathe with a gear cutter. You have to create a special fixture, and it's just going to be a nightmare and take forever. So in my opinion, mills are definitely the way to go. Here's a shot of me holding the heart of my turbione. It's just a really neat thing to have in the palm of your hand. Okay, I bet a lot of you were clicking on this video expecting to see some lathe action. So I don't want to disappoint you. I'll show you how I made the arbors for my turbione heart also. I start with a 2mm steel rod and a 3mm brass tube. 
and the stainless steel is in the center of the tube and it's going to support the tube while it's being cut on the lathe. For those of you who've watched my previous videos, you may have noticed I switched to a 5C collet chuck. This is actually my first time ever using such a style chuck, and I really love it. It holds my round bar very firmly, it's very accurate, and unlike my 3 or 4 jaw chuck, when I insert a piece into my 5C collet, I don't even bother measuring with an indicator. I know it's going to be true, and I really like that. Ah, uh, I wish my cutoff tool for my lathe wasn't broken. This would be so much easier with that. But you get the general idea. I face off one side, cut an oversized piece, pop it in the collar chuck the other way, and then I face it off again. Remove it from the chuck, measure it, then finally cut it to size. One of these days, I'm going to get one of those really fancy CNC lathes with the sub spindles and everything, and it's just going to make it so much easier for me. Here's some bonus footage of me using a staking tool to install the balance spring onto the balance wheel arbor. You can buy staking sets from eBay. The one I got is fairly complete set around $350. I bought a random assortment of 72 clock hair springs, and a few of them happen to have a collar that fits nicely onto a 2mm arbor. Remember that little brass tube we cut earlier? You didn't think I cut that out for fun, did you? Now I'm going to use a staking tool to set that on the balance wheel arbor.